Okay, so welcome to another episode of Exploring Modular Sense. Um, in this episode, we're going to try to demystify further aspects about using a modular synth. Um, one of the things that might intimidate some people about building a modular or using a modular is the fact that you often don't see keyboards attached to them. But if you're just getting started, it might actually, and if you're used to playing keyboards, uh, then it might actually be easier to use a keyboard with your modular. There are modular manufacturers that make special keyboards designed for modular. Uh, most of them tend to be really expensive. Um, so, but fortunately, Arturia came out with the key step, which is right here. It's available in white and black. It's only about $100, $120 maybe. And the great thing about the key step is that it is a MIDI controller keyboard with a lot of functionality and arpeggiator, sequencer, uh, a pitch uh, kind of, not a wheel, but a pitch thing here, a pitch pad, I guess, and a mod pad. Um, octave button so you can go up and down the octaves. Um, but the great thing is if you look here, then um, what you see, it's upside down, sorry. But um, you've got MIDI outputs, but you also have three CV outputs. That's control voltage outputs, one for pitch, gate, and mod. Um, and if you watch the earlier video, then you know that the pitch CV out is gonna, con is gonna go into the one volt per octave or pitch input of your oscillator and the gate output is going to go into your VCA, your voltage controlled amplifier to open and close that amplifier. And then the mod is another CV output, a control output that um, is connected to this mod pad right here. So you've got three CV outs. So this is basically a uh, keyboard that, that can be used as a modular keyboard because it sends control voltage out, not just MIDI out. So that means it integrates seamlessly with your modular. So we're going to explore this today, and I've built a simple patch that I'm going to explain that only uses a few modules, an oscillator, a VCA, um, an LFO, which is the low frequency oscillator. And then just to add some effects, I use the cloud modules, but uh, the clouds module, but you don't have to use that. So this is what it sounds like um, altogether. Okay, so we'll play around more with that later, but let me explain how this is set up, and it's very easy to set up. So let's unplug all this and then see whether we can recreate this. Okay, so I'm gonna take out everything except for the three um, patch cables that are coming out of the Arturia. And what we've got is we've got the pitch output. This is coming out of the, the output that says pitch on the Arturia. It's a CV output. And remember, we've got our Dixie um, oscillator right here. It's a really great oscillator. It's, it's probably my favorite oscillator, and it's really popular in the modular world. Uh, it's a small unit, but it really packs a punch. It sounds fantastic. And we've got different inputs here, and we've got our, our pitch input, which is on this one is called one volt per octave. So we're going to take the pitch output of the Arturia and put it into the one volt per octave. Now that's sending pitch into the Dixie oscillator, but we can't hear anything because we don't have any output coming from it. Now we've got six outputs from the Dixie, various types of waves, a sine wave, sawtooth, uh, pulse wave. Let's use the pulse um, and a sub octave. So we're gonna take the outputs. The outputs are handily marked in black. Not every modular manufacturer does that though. And we're gonna take that and we're gonna send that to our output. In this case, this is just going into clouds, which is going into our output. Now, when I plug this in, remember the, the oscillator is always on. So since we're not using a voltage controlled amplifier yet, you're just gonna hear continuous sound. And I'm gonna 
turn the uh, clouds effect off so that you just hear the pure sound of the oscillator. Now, there's no way to turn that sound off because we're not using a voltage controlled amplifier. And remember the voltage controlled amplifier uh, attenuates the sound um, in a voltage controlled way, meaning we can control that. So instead of having the output go straight to clouds, we're gonna take the output and we're gonna send it to the module that I'm using as a VCA, which is the Optimus, Optimix. Uh, again, it's not exactly technically a VCA, but it functions as one. We're gonna plug it into the input here. On make noise, they've got little arrows that point to the inputs, so that's helpful. So I'm gonna put that into the input there. And then I'm gonna have the output of the Optimix going into the output of clouds. Now, okay. Now it's still playing continuously because we don't have anything going in to the control input of the VCA. So we're gonna take the gate output of the key step, our keyboard, and we're gonna put that gate output into the control. Now most VCAs will have an input that says control. They'll have an input for the basically the, you know, what's gonna be the audio frequency, um, so the sound that you're gonna hear, the signal that you wanna hear. Although it, it can be just used to control, control voltage also. It doesn't have to be modulating just uh, audio. And then it's also gonna have a control input. So the gate is going into the control. Now, the arteria is set up so that it's only gonna send that gate when I press a key. And so what that means is that we're only gonna hear sound when I press a key. So what that's doing is it's keeping this gate closed until I press a key, then it's opening it and allowing the sound to come through. The oscillator is sending sound continuously. So now we've got a neat little patch and if we open up clouds, which is a kind of an effects module, it's a granular synthesizer. Now we've got a neat little thing going. Um, now we also have this mod output. Now, but before we get to that, we've got a pitch um, pad here, which is like a pitch wheel. And that affects the CV going out of the pitch output. So without connecting anything more, we can already use that pitch um, pad right here. mod one isn't going to do anything until we connect the output of the mod. Um, now, what we can do is, is start making things a little more interesting by bringing in a low frequency oscillator. Low frequency oscillators are oscillators that create um, sine waves or other kinds of waves that go very slowly, that oscillate very slowly, and are therefore generally used for modulation rather than used for generating audible frequencies. And the Batumi is my favorite low frequency oscillator, LFO, because it's got four of them, but it actually has three outputs for each. So it's, it's kind of like 12 going and they can be patched internally and you can do all sorts of things. I've done a video on that. I really love it. So let's take the sine output of that, of the first channel of the Batumi, and let's have that go into the pulse width modulation of the Dixie. So what that means is it's going to alter the size of the pulse width, which introduces an interesting moving character to the Dixie. So let's see if that works. So if we turn, um, so if we listen to it by itself. modulating the pulse width. And if I change the frequency of that, we'll hear how that modulation speeds up or slows down. Now 
Now the Batumi has an input for frequency for CV going in to change the frequency. So instead of moving that slider up and down myself, I could send CV into that to do that. And I've got a CV out from the Arturia in the shape of the mod wheel. So if I take the mod wheel and I put that in here, I can use the mod wheel to control that rather than having to reach over and use that slider. So let's hear what that sounds like. thing about modulars there's so many things I could plug that um, mod wheel into for example I could control I could use it to control the pitch of the Dixie to introduce kind of a vibrato effect so if I were to do that I could plug it into the FM input that's frequency modulation input of the Dixie and then the let's see what ha happens with the mod wheel a bit odd. Now if I combine the Batumi with that, I could have the Arturia's mod wheel control the Batumi's frequency and I could take another output from the Batumi from the same channel and have that affect the frequency. So take the saw output from the Batumi. Now what this means, now let's see what this, what this sounds like. So the output is now affecting both the frequency, that is the pitch, and also the pulse width, the shape of the wave that's being generated. And they're both being controlled by the, the LFO, which is being controlled by the mod wheel of the Arturia. Um, so let's, uh, let's, let's see what that kind of sounds like all together. Okay, um, that's kind of cool, um, but I could also use the mod wheel of the Arturia to affect one of the parameters of clouds, and that would be pretty neat, because clouds is my effects module in this case, and it's doing these interesting things. It's doing that granular synthesis, so you notice when I press one key, it's creating that kind of delay with a bit of reverb. Um, so let's if, say if I put this mod wheel into the... Um, position input of the of the clouds and see what happens there. It's changing the effect of cloud slightly. Let's say if I put it into the density input, which con controls the kind of density of the grains that clouds is creating. So that's interesting. So when I've got the mod wheel all the way down, it's got just a little bit of the clouds effect, but when I bring the mod wheels higher up,
neat. So I can control the amount of effect that I want. Now the clouds effect is pretty strong right now. I'd probably dial it back if I wanted it to be usable. But that basically shows you um, what you can do. Um, and you'll notice we just used four modules, um, but we can create a lot of different sounds. We could explore this a lot more um, by patching more things. I could patch a lot of stuff from the Batumi, the low frequency oscillators into clouds to control so that the clouds effect is kind of changing slowly on the basis of the low frequency oscillators of the Batumi. And there's a lot more we can do, but that's just a very simple video to show how you can use a keyboard um, with your modular if you want to use it more as a typical synthesizer instrument with a huge amount of flexibility. So hope you enjoyed watching. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.